The Quran is a clear criterion that guides us to the right opinion. The Quran is a clear criterion that guides us to the right opinion. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'du fa'audhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome to another session of the Clear Criterion Inshallah we will share some insights from the Quran from the commentary of the Quran some important lessons in the time that we have we will continue from the uh, point where we last discussed uh, the issue related to commanding good and forgetting oneself. So saying, commanding others to do good and not acting upon this um, despite giving others the command. This address, who was this verse revealed to or for whom originally and which lessons we can learn from this, moving on from this part of Surah Al-Baqarah. Before we continue this, I would like to share uh, an excellence, a uh, point of excellence rather, in respect of sending blessings upon the best in creation, our beloved Prophet Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam emphasized that we should in- invoke blessings upon him more or often on Friday night and Friday. Why? Because these moments the Prophet ﷺ expressed, these are times when the invocation is presented to him ﷺ. So just to understand, just to understand this particular uh, point of excellence, our Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to make an extra effort or to recite blessings upon him often when the night between Thursday and Friday and Friday itself. There are other narrations which specify Friday as being um, a day where the believers uh, should or it is beneficial for them to make an extra effort in this regard. But in this particular hadith, both occasions are mentioned. So when I said Islamically, the night comes before the day. In As per Sharia, as soon as the sun sets, the next day begins in terms of calculation or in terms of the description of time. So when the night enters, it is actually the night of the following day. This is why it is understood to be, or it can be translated as Friday night, not because it's Friday, it's the night after the Friday. Rather, it means Islamically, when, when we say Friday night, we actually mean the night between Thursday and Friday. So when we attain such nights in the week, we should make an extra effort. The night, just to make, your, just to make it clear for, uh, for viewers who do not understand or are not aware of the Islamic idea of time and uh, calculating time, to make it easy, the night between Thursday and Friday, and Friday itself, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us or reminded us that we should send blessings upon him often for this action or this invocation reaches him Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad In our last episode, we mentioned the verse from the Qur'an in which Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala expressed Initially, or um, the initial address, or when it was revealed, the people of the book, or the scholars among the Israelites, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do you command the people to righteousness and forget yourselves, even though you read the book? So do you not have intelligence? In what way 
were they doing this? The people, uh, there are different interpretations or different explanations related to this. One explanation that is mentioned by the ulama is that some of them would even tell their close relatives that, yes, you should follow the Prophet, وسلم, the final Prophet. He is, um, his religion is true and you should follow him. But they themselves, they weren't doing so. So imagine this, that they them, these scholarly people are telling their own family members, their own kin, that they should follow the Prophet wasallam, the final Prophet. They should believe in Islam and embrace Islam, yet they themselves did not do this. Another interpretation of this verse, or another meaning that is given to this verse, is that before the arrival of the Prophet wasallam due to their study of their scriptures, they had revealed or conveyed this message to their communities that a final prophet would come and um, it will be the obligation on them, on, upon the whole community to embrace the religion of the final prophet and everyone follows him. Um, he will be, there will be no prophet after him and whatever else they had been given in their scripture. All these things were conveyed before the arrival of the Prophet ﷺ. But when the time came, they denied. When the time came, instead of embracing Islam and embracing the message of the final Prophet ﷺ, they developed enmity in their hearts, a jealousy in their hearts, and this became an obstacle for them. They did not embrace faith. So remember, although this uh, ruling or this verse was revealed in that particular context, the ruling, it applies as a general ruling um, of reflection or something that all humankind can reflect upon. And this is something, this, I, this hypocrisy element or saying something, uh, saying one thing and doing the other thing or do, saying one thing and doing the opposite. If we look at it from um, a character trait perspective, just as a human being, we will find that it seems to be a very minor thing when you look at it initially, that one says something but does the opposite. But in reality, this is the root of many evils. Discord, arguments, conflict come from such a character trait someone who says something but does the opposite or tells others, instructs others to do something and does not fulfill or comply with that instruction himself. We see the disadvantage of this in this world and we also see the disadvantage or the loss created or incurred by this in the hereafter. So let us first consider what kind of loss or what kind of disadvantage would there be for one who says something and does the says one thing and does the other thing is hypo, is uh, behaves like a hypocrite he instructs others to do something and then does the complete opposite himself what is the drawback what is the loss for him in this world if we look at it from a simple perspective imagine someone earning trust among his uh, colleagues, family members, community, uh, generally speaking, his neighborhood, being a man of righteousness or being a man of principles, whatever it is, a certain reputation um, has developed over time. But then he is found doing something which completely negates and is the complete opposite of that civility, nobility, good character. He does something foul. He does something sinful. And it's open. It's witnessed by others. Suddenly, all that trust, all that respect, all that honor that he had, it goes. In that one moment where others witnessed his downfall or witnessed his weakness, witnessed a moment of hypocrisy from him, he did not he went against his own principles and did something sinful or wrong or deceived someone. To build that trust again, to regain that trust, is considered by some to be near impossible. 
This is why many say trust is very difficult to gain and very easy to lose. One can spend months, days, years building trust with others and then a moment of weakness, a moment of hypocrisy, a moment of compromising principles and that respect and honor is lost. This is just in the sense of a social framework. We're just considering what people, in terms of what people think of each other, opinions. What about the hereafter? Let us consider a narration that is reported by Sayyidina Adi bin Hatim radiallahu ta'ala and he reports from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and I would like to summarize this hadith mentioned by Imam Tabarani. It, it's quite long but I would like to mention the main parts of the hadith, read some of it and summarize uh, the hadith in a general sense so that we are we're able to benefit from the message. On the Day of Judgment, some people will be called towards paradise. So they will be summoned towards paradise. When these people will come near to paradise, they will experience or they will sense the aroma or the fragrance, the, the beautiful smell of paradise. Now remember, paradise can be uh, one can sense it from miles away. One hadith mentions hundreds of miles away. But anyhow, coming back to the narration, these people will come uh, near paradise. They will experience the beautiful aroma, the beautiful fragrance of paradise. And they will witness from where they are the reward, the palaces, the mansions in paradise, the rewards that Allah subhanahu ta'ala has prepared for the faithful in paradise. So just imagine, we can try to visualize that they are in a state of uh, being overwhelmed by these beautiful spectacles that they see and their senses are overwhelmed by this smell that they have never smelt before. They have never experienced this before suddenly there will be a call to say, take them back, take them away from paradise, and they will be dragged away from paradise. As they will be dragged away from paradise, obviously they will realize that they will not be sent there. Now regret will hit them. They will be affected by regret. The hadith mentions such a regret that they would not have experienced this regret ever before. This kind of remorse, this state of being, uh, of wanting, they would not have felt it ever before, not, not in such a powerful way. And they will express this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As they are taken towards the fire, they will express this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will say, oh Allah, had you not shown us, had you not shown us the rewards that you have prepared for the faithful, for your friends, had you not shown us paradise, basically, and then and sent us to hell without showing us these beautiful spectacles, it would have been easier for us. Meaning after seeing the beauty of paradise and the rewards prepared for the faithful, going towards the fire is more difficult for us. This is what they will express in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply and they will be told. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, the state that you would display and show other people was the opposite of your feeling for me. Meaning in public, they seem to be people of great character, great uh, of uh, humility. And yet in their hearts, they were rebellious, rebellious in sin, rebellious through sin rebellious through ignoring the commands of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu ta'ala will say to these people on the day of judgment, He will say, you would fear the people and due to this fear, you would leave sin because of people and you would not refrain from sin because of me. And another point to reflect upon, after expressing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Today, this day, I will keep you deprived 
I will ensure that you are deprived of my reward and you taste punishment. This is the punishment or the humiliation faced by the one or those people who would show a different side to people but had different feelings for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within their hearts. We seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah forbid, are we in such a state where we only refrain from sinful actions because we're worried about what people will say about us, what people will think of us? Or do we refrain from sin because we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because of our haya, our modesty in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that even if I am alone, Allah is aware of what I am doing, not just aware of what I am doing, aware of what I am feeling. The feeling and emotion inside us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of that. So when evil comes into our hearts and minds, we seek protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We dismiss those evil thoughts. We do not let those evil thoughts linger because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our hearts. And we do not want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not want to have such hearts that are full of evil, bad feelings, evil assumptions, evil intentions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passes judgment against us. We seek his protection from this. So dear viewers, a very serious message about how one must be very careful about being hypocritical in terms of action. Hypocrites generally are of two types, the hypocrite of faith and the hypocrite of action. Here, the emphasis is more about action because they, uh, the, initially the scholars among the uh, people of the book, they knew what the truth was and some of them um, accepted it in their heart in the sense of initially they accepted it, but then they turned away when the time came for them to declare it. So when we look at, when we look at general living and general uh, character, we, and especially for believers, believers, alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah, don't have an issue of hypocrisy of faith. For believers, it's a case of hypocrisy of action. And in the hadith that I shared with you, the summary that I provided, in that there, is, uh, there are so many warnings, so many lessons to be learnt about how if one displays a different character, a good character before people, but really has an evil character in his privacy, there is a risk. Allah forbid that he may be among those who are shown the rewards of paradise on the day of judgment and then thrust towards the fire. And their regret is a regret that they would never have felt before and never experienced before. This is something we can only attempt to describe in words. We truly cannot understand this experience. Another thought which comes to mind, after such a serious reminder regarding hypocrisy of action, what does this mean? That we should not preach because we have shortcomings of our own. We should not tell others to pray, to give zakat, to be well-mannered because we are lacking in some of these or all of these elements. Do we take this lesson from this verse and the traditions shared? No, we are people who are. We are because of our nature. Sometimes we give in to the evil that um, is within us and we fail to ignore it. We fail to dismiss evil which lingers and then influences us, it does not force us. What we do is something we do by choice. But if a thought, a recurring thought, a lingering thought, uh, when it's repeated again and again and one keeps thinking about it, it can affect decisions, it can affect character, it can affect our words. But coming back to this point, should we stop preaching? And we should only preach, we should only say good things, we should only encourage others um, enjoying the good and condemn evil when we are absolutely perfect. When we have, we tick every box. No, because this will never happen if we truly understand what piety is and what sin is. The greatest of the pious predecessors, 
the great saintly figures, never declared themselves as being pious, always considered themselves to be lacking. And out of humility, they would call themselves sinners, sinful, this sinful servant, this sinful man, this sinful slave. They would refer to themselves with such words. That was the state of people who spent nights in worship and days fasting. There is no comparison. So for us to say that we will only preach or say something good when we're perfect, this is very logical. This is not the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. In fact, we learn um, from a hadith that is mentioned, reported by Sayyidina Anas ta'ala an, where the Messenger of Allah ﷺ was questioned by the companions ta'ala anhu majma'in. The, some of the companions, they asked the Prophet ﷺ that should we command the good when we are completely acting upon good and should we refrain from uh, command others or should we condemn evil when we have completely and perfectly refrained from evil and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no that they should command the, they should command good even if they have not attained perfection meaning completeness in this regard and they should refrain uh, uh, condemn evil even if in their opinion, they have not attained that sense of completion or perfection. Because in reality, we will never, if we truly understand uh, the teachings of uh, our Prophet wasallam, we would never be in a position where we would say that, yes, I don't sin, or I have no sins, or I am free from sin. Human beings, generally speaking, are not free from sin. Being sinless or impeccable is the character of the prophets and the trait of the angels. Humankind, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves them like Allah preserves his friends, the awliya, Allah protects them. Allah protects them from sin because Allah chooses them as his friends. But generally speaking, normal people, we are. We are in our thoughts, we are in our assumptions, we are when we um, in everyday life. If we sat down and really did a kind of spiritual audit, if I'm just making it up, right? Just to make you, uh, just to explain what I mean by this, we sat down and we wrote down all the things that we did or even thought that were not good. Or we just have a pen and paper and we do this exercise for a part of the day, uh, an action which was wrong or even inappropriate, make note of it. Because an inappropriate action can offend others. Sometimes a permissible action can offend others as well. So we have to be careful if we're, you know, we might not intend to, but we might offend others. Make note, if we make note what we did, what we didn't do, we uh, certain obligations we couldn't fulfill, we would be shocked by the results. So this is why for the preachers, we're all, we all have a duty to preach in our capacity. Preaching is not just for ulama. Preaching is not just for people who have studied the religion. We preach within our capacity, meaning we share, uh, we explain religion to the best of our ability in terms of at least we can remind others to pray and remind each other about paying our zakat, and remind each other about the basic rights of Muslims, how a husband, for example, should provide for his family, his wife, clothing, provision, accommodation, and food. And this is his primary, these are his prime, the primary rights that the wife has over him. And if he has children providing for his children and uh, caring for them also. So these kind of, these, this is general knowledge. These reminders we can share with one another and the reminder of being just and fair, the basic lessons of good etiquette. Of course, we can remind each other. This verse and what I have shared uh, just now doesn't mean we cannot preach because we are not perfect or we are not doing all the good things that are required for the religion. Moving on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses and attain help through patience and the prayer. And 
And indeed, the prayer is burdensome except for those who submit to me, who submit to me from the heart. Those who are certain that they will meet their Lord and that they will return to Him. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the people in that time period, the Israelites, and generally speaking, all people, that to turn away from this lure of wealth and power, they should seek help from patience and prayer. Patience strengthens the heart and the prayer is a means of strengthen, strengthening the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the two fundamental things that help us to face every trial and difficulty in life or counter every obstacle in spirituality. If we seek help from prayer, and we strengthen our hearts, we seek help from patience and strengthen our hearts, and we seek help from prayer and strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many of our matters will become easier. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given believers the faithful general guidance too. If we want to attain success, if we want to attain and nearness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should adopt patience and prayer. And remember, patience is at the first instance. As soon as something happens, we're patient right in that moment. We don't complain for five minutes and then we say, I'm being patient. The reward of patience depends on our initial response. Prayer and patience are the fundamental aspects of success for a believer and the Scholars amongst the people of the book are being reminded that they use these means, these ways to counter these feelings that are stopping them from embracing faith. Adopt these elements and you will succeed in overcoming these obstacles to embracing the truth. And there's also glad tidings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in the, in the following verse that those who have such a, an inclination and devotion to prayer they will be blessed with meeting their Lord. They will be blessed with the vision of their Lord. And the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beautiful thing in paradise. There is no blessing greater than the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we all be among those who are blessed with this ultimate reward in the hereafter, which is for the believers in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds, accept our good intentions. Keep watching Mother New Channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. The Quran is a clear criterion that guides us to the right opinion. The Quran is a clear criterion that guides us to the right opinion.